Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. Thanks for joining me on another video. We're going to be getting into an interesting topic, especially if you're new into the steroid game, new into bodybuilding. This video is for you. We're going to be talking about how to design a beginner cycle. But before we get into all of that, thanks for all the likes, thanks for the subs, thanks for the comments. I appreciate all you guys. You know, I really wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you. So, hey, I really do appreciate it. Keep them coming, you know? <laughs> but hey, again, the topic of this video is how to design a beginner steroid cycle, right? We're gonna break it down, make it nice and easy. First things first, right? What am I gonna say? Testosterone, baby, test is best, always. We're gonna be starting with test weeks one to two, right? We're gonna be doing 250 to 350 milligrams of test. And I know, hold on, don't get your panties in a bunch yet, right? We're not gonna stay there. We're gonna be bumping it up over time. The reason we're starting at this 250 to 350 dose is for a couple reasons, right? This is your first cycle. That's the whole point of this. We don't wanna just go all the way crazy to your max dose because you're gonna put yourself in a crazy hormonal fluctuation and put more testosterone in your body than your body has any idea what to do with, right? People usually work their way up to these big doses, and to be honest, they earn them. The more muscle mass you have on your body, the higher doses you can run, because you can actually make use of all those androgens, right? So we're gonna be starting off at this 250, 350 mix. And the way to determine if you're 250 or 350, honestly, go by your size, right? If you're a bigger guy, you can go a little bit on the higher side. If you're a smaller guy, go a little bit, a little bit on the lower side. It's not an exact science, but Go in, go in that range, right? Now, during this first couple weeks, we're gonna be keeping a special close eye out for side effects, right? Main side effects we're gonna be looking for, blood pressure, acne, bloat, right? Keep it simple. Check your blood pressure, guys, at least two or three times a day, first thing in the morning, middle of the day, and at night. Make sure, you know, ideally you'd like to keep it under 130, over 90 at the worst. Hopefully it'll be lower than that, but if you're doing that, you'll be okay. You, it's definitely not ideal, but there's no need to panic, okay? Oftentimes, too, for people, that small increase in blood pressure within the first couple weeks seems to steady out um, over time. So as long as it's not too, too high, you're going to be okay. If it gets too high, there are things you can do. We're going to talk about that in a different video, though. Okay. Next, we're going to be moving on to weeks two through four. Okay, now we're going to be adding in the EQ. We're going to add EQ in at a one-to-one -one ratio with your testosterone. Now, I have a few reasons for this and a few reasons why I like EQ over the other options, right? You got other options. However, I think EQ is the best. Now, we're going to be using EQ for a couple reasons, right? One of the main reasons is for its AI-like effect. It works kind of like an AI, like an aromatase inhibitor. You can take more testosterone by adding in the EQ without needing an AI. So you're gonna need, it's less of a burden on your system. EQ is less toxic than the AI, and you also get an anabolic effect from the EQ, right? And a cosmetic effect as well. So you get a lot of benefits from using this EQ over an AI. Now, don't get me wrong, AIs are not the devil. And if you can see that right there, AIs are not the devil. I'm not saying don't use them if you need them. I've used them. I know million, no, I don't know million. I know a lot of people that have used them, right, and are totally fine. If you need it, you use it. But if we can avoid it, we're gonna avoid it, right? Why not avoid it and get some anabolic effect too by throwing that any EQ in? And now the reason we're throwing it in at week two is because it takes a while to build up in the system. It is a really long ester, if you guys know that. So in order to get that AI-like effect, and the anabolic effect from it as well, you're gonna have to run it for a while. So that means as we're cranking up our testosterone dose in week four, the EQ is starting to take effect within two weeks of using it. So that means when we increase our test dose to a higher dose, at which most people would need an AI, we're gonna get there in a second. Instead, the EQ is gonna be taking effect and taking care of that for you. So you don't have to worry about the AI, you don't have to worry about gyno and all that stuff, right? It really is a wonderful drug. Now, what are your other options though, besides EQ for a secondary drug that are 
for the most part non-toxic, anabolic, and work as an AI? Well, there are two other options. You can use Primo or Masteron. Now, what's wrong with those two drugs? Well, I got a reason for each. Masteron, okay, it's gonna ruin your hair. If you care about your hairline at all, don't do Masteron, because I'm telling you, it will. I'm not particularly prone to hair loss. I do get a little bit. When I ran mask, clumps, man. I'm telling you, clumps were coming out of my head. And I know it's pretty common for a lot of people. So if you're already bald or you don't care about that, Masteron is another good option. You can use it. In addition to EQ, you don't get as much of this um, hematocrit effect on your hematocrit as you do with EQ. If you use like a gram plus EQ, even a little bit less, your hematocrit's going to go absolutely bonkers. But with Masteron, that's not so much of a problem, but it's the hair. And I like my hair. I don't want to lose it. So I like EQ. I recommend EQ for most people, like I said, unless you don't care about the hair. The other option, arguably the cleanest and best anabolic, really, in general, is Primabolin. What's wrong with Primabolin? Well, it's not that easy on the hair, first of all. Second of all, it's faked all the time, and it's very expensive. So... You know, if you can source it properly, yeah, you know, it's a pretty good option. You're still going to get hair loss, and it's very expensive. So in my opinion, I would just recommend going with EQ, right? And if this is your first cycle, chances are you're not going to be able to source real Prima Bolin anyway. So just forget about the Prima Bolin. Don't even worry about that. I'm telling you, EQ is pretty easy to make. It's fairly common. Not really many people fake it. Go with the EQ, I'm telling you. So... Another good thing about the EQ, like I already said, is it's not very toxic. It doesn't affect your blood work too much, and besides the obvious things like cholesterol, right? A little bit lower HDL, a little bit higher LDL, but a lot of that is also based on your diet. So I always say, what's my slogan? Eat like shit, look like shit, your blood work's going to look like shit too, okay? <laughs> so what's the next step? Now we're talking weeks 4 through 14. Now, and this isn't a hard cutoff at weeks 14, we're going to get into that at the end. But at week four, I'm going to recommend increasing your tests and EQ again simultaneously in conjunction with one another, one-to-one -one ratio or close to. And we're going to be going 500 to 600 milligrams each. Now, this is going to put you around a gram to 1.2 grams of gear per week. This is a good dose. You are going to get some serious gains off this, I'm telling you. As long as you can handle it and your body's not freaking out, you're not getting crazy side effects, because listen guys, if you're getting the side effects, just stop. It's not worth it. We need to reevaluate. We'll come back to the drawing board and we'll make a new cycle. A lot of too many people just push through the side effects, including myself. It's not the smart way to go. Because there are other ways to design cycles that are right for you that won't give you the same side effects. Okay? But 500 to 600 bigs each, like I said, about one one to one point two grams of gear per week. It's enough to give you those gains you really are going to be noticing it. And it's going to be a slow and steady thing, building up over time all the way through week 14. Now, there's three options, okay, once you get to this point, once you get to week 14. You can either, one, stop, come down to TRT, because to be honest, this cycle is not conducive for coming off and restarting your HPTA. If you're coming on, if you're doing this cycle, you're, you're just going to go down to TRT, you know, this is a blast and cruise kind of cycle. It's definitely not a come off and restart kind of cycle. Because the EQ, like I said, is a really long half-life. It's going to keep you suppressed for a very, very long time. So TRT, right? Option one. Come down on your dose. Go down to TRT. Option two. Raise doses of the compounds you're already on. EQ and test. You have a little room here. You could go all the way up to, let's say... 750 to a gram of test all the way up to like 750 EQ before you start running into some serious problems. Option number three, add more compounds, right? And this is where things get a little crazy. And this right here, number three, is actually going to be part two of this video when we're going to get into this. Where, how to escalate this cycle, right? How do we get crazy? How do the big bodybuilders do it? Where do we go from here? And I'm going to tell you guys that, but that's in part two, right? So in terms of which one do we do, there's only one real way to know, and that's to get your blood work done, guys. You have to do it. If you don't get your blood work, you're just guessing, all right? But I will tell you this. Most people tolerate tests and EQ very well. 
They're not toxic compounds. You can run them for very long periods of time. 14 weeks is honestly on the low end of a cycle like this. You could run this for much longer, you know? So this is really a starting point, okay? If you just want to get your, your feet wet, right? Come down to TRT, reevaluate. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this option unless you got your blood work done and it's totally fucked and then, you know, we can think about number one, but at this point in the time frame and the doses we've run, I would argue two or three is actually a better option, okay? Three, or number two, rather, is obvious, right? We're gonna raise doses, we're gonna repeat this cycle, just raising them a little bit, so we go from 500 to, let's say like 750, hold there for a while and see what we can push. Again, eventually you're gonna run into problems with the EQ raising it too high, so you might have to go with option number three. Now, option number three, like I said, I'm going to discuss that in part number two. But, hey, if you guys made it this far, I appreciate y'all. I love you guys. Honestly, leave me a comment, thumbs up, all that. I appreciate it. I really do. Let's get jacked together. Peace.